904, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, welcome everyone. So uh, thank you so much for joining us on a, on a Saturday, this bright and early. Um, hope you guys are, uh, actually, I don't know if, uh, if all students are, have started their summer yet. So I know that um, some students are still in school. So hopefully those students who are watching this are enjoying your summer vacation and not having to go to summer school. That'd be awesome. Uh, so the purpose of today is to make you feel more comfortable about uh, the start of the school year. And so uh, we've got some ideas of things that you are probably interested in knowing about, um, but please, uh, we've made you guys all panelists so that you guys can at any time can unmute yourselves and ask questions. Uh, I know that in the Zoom world, uh, a lot of stuff happens in the chats and uh, Ms. Heath will be busy trying to respond to, to chat questions and things, um, but it makes, makes the, the conversation much more interesting if people do uh, uh, have the courage to raise their hand and ask a question or just unmute yourself, because uh, otherwise I feel like I'm just sitting here uh, talking to myself for the entire hour. Um, so let me, uh, let's start with uh, just talking about what's new. Uh, I, maybe I should introduce myself. Uh, so I'm Neil McCurdy. I'm the uh, principal and executive director of Set High. Um, uh, McClendon, uh, Heath, and Ms. Vegas, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? McClendon first. I am Daryl McClendon, and I am the assistant principal, chief business officer, hence my question of, do we have a fountain? We didn't approve that. <laughs> and I'm also athletic director. Um, sorry, I'm Ms. Heath. Um, I'm the office manager. Um, so you've probably talked to all of you at some point. Um, just on a technical note, I'm inviting people to become panelists and some are remaining in the attendee thing. So I'm assuming that means you don't want to be a panelist. So um, there you go. All right, thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Vegas. I am the president of our parent association. I've had now officially three children graduate from SET. So I've been there a total of six years. Yeah, and thank you for uh, joining us, uh, Tammy. All right, uh, so let me, uh, so I, I could open it up to questions right now, but uh, let me, let me uh, actually try to guess at some of the questions that you might have and answer those first. Um, so the first thing I wanna, uh, uh, comment on is that uh, I know some of you maybe are are hearing us talk for the first time, uh, and uh, but I know many of you have heard us talk before, and so I don't want to answer things that uh, you guys have already heard. So I'm going to try to be efficient in terms of the way that we uh, uh, handle questions and try to get like the, the new new stuff uh, covered first, so that if you feel like it's uh, getting boring and you've got somewhere to go, um, feel free to to disconnect when you feel like you've got all the answers to your questions. So I guess the, the first thing is, is what's new and, and hopefully you guys saw that we have uh, uh, a new teacher of the year award that Ms. Geis received. So we're super excited about that. Um, we also uh, were featured on NBC7 News um, in a couple of really, really positive uh, segments. So we're excited about that. Um, good to see that the, the world is recognizing the great work that we did during COVID. Um, we wish that we didn't have to do that great work, but it's nice to, to be recognized for the, the innovative uh, teaching that we did during this time. And uh, I think the other big news is that we graduated uh, our seniors this year in a live graduation, and uh, it was a, a beautiful ceremony, and we're super, uh, super pleased to have been able to get things relatively back to normal where we could actually have a, a live graduation ceremony. And so uh, at some point, uh, maybe I'll show some photos of that. Um, if, uh, if other people are talking, we can kind of do a, a share screen and show some photos of the graduation. So I think it's important for our new students to, to kind of like see what the ultimate goal is. Uh, and well, I, hopefully the ultimate goal is much bigger than just graduating from high school, but um, the goal for your four years here at Set High. Um, and I do recognize that there are parents on here who are not uh, freshman parents and uh, so, I apologize if, if it ever feels like this is a freshman centric uh, uh, commentary, but please, um, you know, if there's something that you think is, is specific to you that's not freshman related, please don't feel like we're not, um, we're not aware that you're out there and please feel free to ask questions if you have any. Um, so I think the, the, probably the biggest question that is on everybody's mind is what does next year look like? 
And so I'm going to try my best to, to describe what next year looks like. Uh, one thing that I've learned in this COVID world is that things change weekly. Uh, it seems like we're getting a little bit uh, slower, um, you know, a little bit slower, uh, uh, just drastically different information coming at us. Uh, and so it's a little bit easier to predict a couple months in, in advance. Um, so I, I feel pretty confident in, in what I'm about to say, but you know we never know with uh, with this pandemic. And so uh, don't hold me to anything that I'm saying here, but this is our, our best guess of what next year is going to look like. So the good news is we're expecting to be back uh, five days a week uh, with all students in attendance um, all the time, uh, which is uh, going to be I hopefully welcome news to parents, students, and staff alike. Um, we're, we're happy to be able to, uh, you know, we as a staff are so much happier when we've got students in the building. And uh, we noticed that a lot with hybrid, and it's going to be even better when we have full classrooms again. So we're super excited about that. Uh, it is uh, still, uh, I, I think if I'm, I'm and I'm going to send an email out to our, our current families um, to kind of make, make this really, really clear. The problem with the COVID guidelines now are that COVID is still out there. And so we're opening up our economy, we're opening up the world, and uh, you know, we're basically you know, allowed to be wandering around unmasked uh, these days, but there is still COVID out there. And so there's still concern about the potential spread of COVID, especially among uh, our younger population. And so fortunately we're a high school and so we don't think that we're gonna have this kind of problems that other schools are gonna have, but I think it's worth just kind of paying attention to this as a parent so that you can think about uh, your own uh, decisions um, when thinking about uh, you know, vaccines and, and school decisions as a, as a family. So the main issue is that in the event that there is a close contact um, with somebody who is uh, COVID, who has COVID, then that means that the quarantining rules are still in effect. And those quarantining rules are only in effect for people who are unvaccinated. And so our hope is that the majority of our population is, is going to be vaccinated. Uh, and uh, so we won't have uh, issues. And so we're pretty confident that as, as far as the school staying open, the school is going to never shut down, assuming that, you know, COVID stays the way it is and we don't have new, some new strain or something like that. But we're pretty confident that the school is never going to have to shut down, but we are worried that we might have to uh, quarantine individual students. And so if you want to avoid that situation, um, then the best bet is to get your child vaccinated so that they don't have to be uh, quarantined. And so that puts us in kind of an awkward situation too, because our duty is to make sure that we're doing contact tracing. So we have just signed a document saying that we are going to be con contact tracing next year in the event that there is a COVID exposure at school. And the only way that we can do that effectively is if we have information. And so we are gonna be uh, requesting uh, vaccination records. It's not a requirement, um, but it is something that we're going to need to have in order to be able to do the, uh, the contact tracing. So we know whether a student is, needs to stay home in quarantine or whether they are allowed back on campus. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. And that's, uh, we're not doing anything different than any other school is doing. So just kind of uh, keep that in mind for, for next year. And especially if you've got younger students, this is probably going to be uh, a big issue for you. If you've got younger siblings who are unable to be vaccinated yet, uh, the elementary schools and the middle schools potentially are going to have more of these, uh, these potential exposures that are going to unfortunately derail your lives. And we all think we're going back to work full time, but if you still have to take care of kids because they're quarantined, that's going to cause uh, a lot of stress for families. So just uh, something to kind of keep in mind for uh, for next year. But we, um, as a school, we're uh, uh, expecting to have uh, all the students in the classroom. So three foot social distancing is is what we're going to be uh, uh, working to achieve. Um, mask wearing is mandatory in all schools in California. Uh, the, they did just change the guidelines and uh, mask wearing is not required outside. So if there's any kind of PE or lunch or anything like that that happens outside, the students do not need to wear masks outside. Um, but bottom line, uh, really good news relative to the way things look this year. Uh, but um, it is, it's not going to be 100% back to normal. 
we're expecting that all of our standard activities are going to um, are going to resume. So we're going to have sports and clubs and all those kinds of things. Uh, we did have to answer a question about whether or not we were going to have assemblies. And so that's a little bit of a challenge because we don't think we can maintain three foot social distancing with assemblies. And so uh, that will be one thing that's a little bit different next year. So maybe our passion projects or sorry, our passion talks um, that we had to cancel this year. Um, we'll have to figure out a way to have the passion talks still happen, but have them happen uh, with students inside advisories, inside classrooms, instead of everyone being in the den. So it's not gonna be quite the same, um, but that's a, a small price to pay, I think, for uh, us finally getting back to normal. So let me pause there, because I know that was probably a lot to digest and there might be a lot of questions about this. So um, does anyone have any questions, concerns, comments about what next year is gonna look like? Or is this kind of, kind of what you expected? Hopefully it's what everyone expected or better than expected, that's, that's actually the best. I'm not monitoring chat, so I don't know if anyone's chatting. Good question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what is the start date of school next year? Uh, so we have, uh, let, so I'll answer that question in a, in a, in a little bit, because uh, I'll point you guys to the calendar so you can actually see all the dates, um, but it's the 27th. 30th. The 30th. 30th. 30th of August. Yeah. So the, the Monday, the last Monday in August. Any other questions? Hello? Yeah. Hi. Yes, please. So we should have the, the vaccinating record, uh, like uh, if, if we want like uh, our children like to be in a school, right? Uh, so, so you don't need to have the, the vaccine. So the vaccines are not mandatory in the state of California. Um, and, and I think the main reason that uh, for that is because there's no vaccines for the younger uh, students. And so until they can have a blanket policy for all grades, all K-12, I don't think they're going to make it mandatory. Um, so it's not mandatory. We can't require it. Um, we as a school do recommend it because we think it's going to make, uh, you know, our chances of having as normal a school year as possible um, uh, better if we have uh, close to 100% uh, vaccination, but we do not require it. Um, but if you, uh, if if there's a case where you are going to, where your child is going to have to be quarantined, uh, you're going to have to have a proof of vaccination to not do that quarantine. If that makes sense. Oh, yes. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. Mr. Bain has his hand up. Thank you. Um, so a question about the quarantine procedures or just anything else generally, when we visited the campus with Carrie earlier, all of the classrooms had these OWL cameras and mm -hmm. some students you know, joining in hybrid mode. Are those going to stay in place and um, will students have the ability, should they need to, to join virtually on, on certain days? Yeah, so thanks for uh, bringing that up. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, so we are gonna have OWLs uh, from here on out. Um, so we think it's a really, really good uh, method of making sure the kids are still engaged if they're homesick. Uh, so regardless of whether COVID is a thing or not. Uh, so we are going to continue to have OWLs uh, as an option. Um, we are not going to be a, a virtual school, though. And so, uh, so there's going to be limits on who can actually participate um, uh, remotely. So we'll give, we haven't quite figured out what the number of days is, but there'll be uh, maybe five days per semester that are are kind of flex days where a kid is allowed to connect from from home, um, so so that it doesn't get abused and they're not just always connecting from home. And uh, any kind of uh, doctor's note or anything like that will allow a kid to to be home. And so during quarantining, for sure, that's going to be a quote unquote doctor's note. And so that'll be a uh, a way that our students can still be engaged in the classroom. But we do Thank want. You. Yeah, but we do want to have our, our students in class um, because the whole, the whole school just runs better when we actually have students here. Um, we were, so we're spending, uh, you know, we did a lot of uh, extra tutoring support and uh, summer school this year. And the reasons that we're having to do that is because of kids who are disconnected, uh, even though they had the ability to connect virtually, they were just disconnected because it's hard to it's hard to do. It's hard to 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 sit on uh, Google Meet or Zoom all day, as you guys are all, have all experienced uh, in your work world as well. 
Uh, uh, Sandra Beaver. Hi, um, two quick questions. Um, one, um, the lunches, you mentioned the, the lunch might be a little different than it was before. I don't know what your lunch practices are, like are they indoors, outdoors, both? And then the um, passion talks, I'm not familiar with those. How frequent are those? Should they resume? So the, so the lunch uh, is not gonna be that different other than we probably can't have as many people in the den. Uh, so the den is usually where the bulk of the students uh, uh, did lunch. Um, we do have uh, outdoor seating. So I'm pointing outside because I happen to be I'm sitting in my office right now. Um, so we do have outdoor seating and we've got shade plus. Um, so the, my guess is that we'll probably wind up with a lot more students outside because usually the reason students were inside was because of the heat, um, but with the shade sales, uh, we think that we're probably going to have more students out there. And then we also have, uh, 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 we always have one staff member down at the park. And so that's another option for students. And so um, we're, we're, we're hoping that there's just going to be kind of a natural divide so that we don't have too many students in the, in the den. But if we're ever not uh, able to accommodate the three foot social distancing in the den, then we might have to like have some kind of forced, you know, you have to be outside uh, um, or, have days when kids have to be outside versus inside, just so we can make sure that we don't have too many uh, students all in the den. Um, but other than that, uh, nothing's really gonna change with lunch. Uh, my guess is also, since students don't have to wear a mask outside, they'll probably more be uh, encouraged to, to go outside as, uh, as well. Um, with regard to the passion talks, so the passion talks uh, when they resume are about once a month. And, uh, and so, it, it kind of depends on, on, you know, we don't force it. So if we don't have a, somebody who's a great speaker um, and we don't, you know, it's kind of hard for us to line these up right now because a lot of businesses are still just trying to grapple with whether or not they're, they're, they can um, uh, go back to work. So a good example of this is, is North of Grumman this year. They actually did do a passion talk, but it was virtual. Uh, and, uh, and we said, we asked them if they could come in uh, you know, at the end of that fashion talk, we asked if they could come in because they also support our robotics program. If they could come in and, and judge our robotics events and they're not allowed to actually do anything out in public. So, so, um, so that's a little bit up in the air, but usually once a month is what we try to do. Thank you. Hey, can mm -hmm. I add something about the uh, lunch and park? Of course. Um, <clears throat> so we are, and I guess this is probably the most important thing. We are a closed campus. We, during lunchtime, uh, we consider the, the park to be an extended extension, if you will, of our campus. Kids cannot just leave and go uh, to the store or go down the street somewhere to go get something for lunch. Um, and like Dr. McCurdy said, it's either Dr. McCurdy, myself, or Ms. Heath is always down there in the park. And there are places in the park that are out of bounds, but we make sure that the kids, kids know that. And our lunches, um, if you don't know, a number of years ago, we used lunches from San Diego Unified. Um, let's say that they uh, weren't pleasing to the palate, uh, which is a kind way of putting it. So we went to getting our lunches and from uh, buying things from Costco. And the kids, as a general statement, just love the Costco, different things that we get there. So that's all I have on that. Uh, I'll get to you in a second, uh, Ms. Hudson, I'm assuming is what that last name is. Um, uh, but there's a chat question. Somebody asked what the enrollment is for this for the school. So we're budgeting uh, 210 students. Uh, we could be as high as 220 or 230. Um, so nothing really has to change with our with any of our staffing or anything to to handle um, that extra that extra number. So um, it's just it, we never know exactly who's going to wind up uh, showing up, um, but we could be. Uh, so kind of our our high is 60 students per grade, uh, which would take us to 240 students. Uh, so Ms. Hudson, did I get that last name right? It's just, oh, it's Hudson. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <you're close. laughs> and actually my question was very similar. What were your, what's your anticipated class size then? So, uh, so 60 students per grade uh, winds up being about 20 students per class. Um, our max is 25. So the reason we, you know, so in the ideal world, if we could exactly put kids where they were, where we wanted them to be and not where they needed to be, 
um, we have exactly 25 students per class and exactly 75 students per grade. And so um, rather than, than going to 75 students per grade right now, um, we're, we're keeping it a little bit artificially low to give us a little bit more flexibility in terms of, of scheduling, so. Yeah, and, and our charter, in case you guys wanted to know, um, allows for 320 students, but where we are, we will not ever go up to that number because it's just gonna feel like um, we're stepping on each other. So we probably, our sweet spot is probably 260 to 270. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey, Neil, my name's Rob. I got a quick question for you. Uh, sure. Hey, so you talked about the social distancing uh, and mask wearing in the classroom. How does that, how does all that stuff apply to the athletics? So uh, have you heard anything new recently, Daryl? Um, no, towards the end of it. So as I said earlier, I'm athletic director also. So let me just say a question that people are going to probably ask or answer a question that people are going to probably ask. Um, we have boys and girls cross country, boys and girls volleyball, boys and girls basketball, and boys and girls track and field. That's not to say that we may not have another sport, depending on the interest of the student and the availability of a coach. Uh, we will not ever have football. Um, there's a number of reasons for that, but one of them is the fact that, um, beside the fact that we don't have facilities for it, uh, the insurance for a football team is just crazy. Um, <clears throat> We, we had boys and girls basketball this year. And at the beginning of it, um, every kid had to wear a mask while they were participating. And then towards the end, they actually started to cut that back a little bit in terms of the mask. Um, they limited the number of, <clears throat> not participants, but the number of spectators that could go to different games. My expectation, and I'll put an asterisk behind that because this is my expectation, is that when we come back um, in August, the first sport's going to be cross country. My expectation is a lot of the, the limitations they put on before will not be there. I don't believe the kids are going to have to wear masks. And I don't believe there's going to be a limit, if you will, in terms of number of spectators to be there. Yeah, so definitely the outdoor sports. So the, the current guidelines are that masks are not required outdoors. So all the outdoor sports are, are totally fine. Um, but we're not really sure what's going to happen with the, with the indoor sports. So this year, just so you know, the uh, in order for athletes to participate in games, they had to uh, uh, do COVID testing each week. And so we're pretty sure that's going to continue. That's something else that I, that I forgot to mention, too, is that we will be doing uh, spot COVID testing um, throughout well, as, as long as, as it's still an issue, but certainly at the beginning of the school year. So yeah, we... And, and that's what he is alluding to. We actually did that at school and sent it away and made sure everybody was safe. Yeah. So, uh, Paul, before we get to you, uh, the, the Jorge um, window was trying to talk, so. Hi, um, I'm Elise and I have, we have a ninth grader that's gonna start there. And I'm just wondering that will diversity is important to us. And I was just wondering how diverse your student body is. So we're uh, so I'm I'm trying to trying to figure out how to actually quantify it because um, these questions are usually better with uh, 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 using numbers. But I'm not exactly sure how to do that. Um, I would argue that we're uh, very diverse, um, uh, but I don't know that. Uh, I, I think we're probably a pretty good mirror of of San Diego, um, okay. uh, but I. I don't have the exact numbers. Um, um, so certainly the, so male, female is uh, probably, probably pretty close now. I'm guessing 55, 45, maybe, um, but I think we're getting close to 50, 50. Um, uh, Hispanic is, uh, I'm feeling like that's probably like 30, 30%, maybe 40. Okay. I don't um, mean necessarily numbers. I just mean, is it culturally diverse? Like, you know, yeah, so I think I think that's kind of one of the hallmarks of our school. Uh, so we've got a very diverse uh, faculty, um, which means that the students are very diverse, and where uh, acceptance is one of the major tenets of our of our of all of our teaching. And so, um, yeah, so I I don't think anyone is ever going to feel excluded at our school. Yeah. Okay. Can I? No, thank can you. I for that? Yeah, please do. One of the 
one of the big tenets of our school, as, as Dr. McCurdy was saying, is acceptance. Um, and one of the many reasons why we would love to have kids back at school is that we know our sweet spot and our secret sauce, if you will, is basically our personalization that we have with the kids. Um, I can speak for myself, Dr. McCurdy and Ms. Heath. Um, we know every kid in the school. Right, which is very different than a typical school, even a typical small school. Um, so doing that, knowing, knowing who the kid is and what the kid is all about is ex extremely helpful. And during COVID, when we're looking at, like looking at all of you guys on these screens, we don't know who you are, right? And, and it was difficult over the course of this last year, but coming into next year, we get to be who we are. Um, you'll see, and your, your kids will come back and talk about the teachers at school and how accepting the kids are. You know, we really are trying to make sure that we can figure out and help them figure out what their passions are, as well as, of course, educating them and making sure that they have an interest in the things that are going on, not just in school, but outside of school. Thank you. Uh, so, Paul, you still have your question? Yeah, thank you, Dr. McCarty. I don't know if I'm jumping ahead too far, but um, can you talk a little bit about how this incoming student body will be assigned classes and uh, electives for next year? Thank you for that segue. All right. Uh, Ms. Heath, can you uh, make me boss again so I can share my screen? So, Paul, you, you'll get that check for 20 bucks. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so all right, so this is our website. And uh, now that you guys are parents, um, the most interesting part of this website is going to be the parent portal area. Uh, and so we'll jump over there. And a couple things that I want to uh, point out. So the school calendar is up to date now. So if I click on this, is that did I share the tab or the whole screen? Can you guys see that? Hopefully you're seeing yes, the calendar. Sir. Yeah, okay, good. Yep. Um, so, so here's the school calendar. Uh, you can see that uh, August 30th is the first day of school. Um, and, uh, and since everyone likes to plan ahead, last day of school is June 17th, which seems awfully late this year. Um, but we're starting a, starting a week later this year. Uh, so that's the school calendar. And then uh, also on here is the, the bell schedule. And so this is uh, the most exciting part for us is that the bell schedule is actually uh, going to be going back to normal. So you'll see that we have uh, five classes. They're all 75 minute classes. And, uh, and so um, this year, because of uh, just Zoom fatigue, uh, we had basically cut all of our classes to about half of that. So about 35 minute uh, classes. And then we had flex time at the end of the day. So we're very aware of the challenges that we're going to have in getting everybody um, to, to be back into the, the mindset of, of, you know, full work, full school. And so, um, so this might seem like a really, really long class, but we have all committed as a staff to make sure that that what we we're doing with a flex time um, we're just going to embed that into the classes. And so uh, we're thinking, you know, probably about 35 minutes of, of lecture time. Uh, the teachers know that they can give uh, individual breaks. We're not going to have bell, bell breaks. We don't have bells in the school anyway, but we're not going to have like everybody breaking um, in the middle of period one at the same time. But teachers are expected to, to give breaks to the, to the students um, to kind of help them with, uh, you know, kind of ease back into a full day schedule. And then the second half of the period will be what we're doing with flex time, where it's the one-on-one -on -one support and the kids working on homework and that kind of thing. So that's the, the, the bell schedule. Uh, so Paul was asking about scheduling classes. And um, so core competency is the way, is the, the tool that you guys are all gonna get access to soon. Um, so let me jump into that real fast. Uh, so this is what uh, core competency looks like. And uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, things that I wanna point out to you. So first of all, um, you, I think July 15th or so is when we're going to import all the new students into core competency, which means that we're gonna be, the system is automatically gonna start emailing parents if the parents have not registered um, for core competency. So don't bother registering now because it's not gonna help you. 
um, but you'll get an email that will ask you to, to register. And once you register, you'll automatically be connected to your student. If you have multiple kids in our school, uh, then you'll probably only be connected to one, and then you'll have to manually add the other so one. Dr. To McCurdy, if you can hear me, I believe you froze. Uh oh, so let me know when I'm back. Am I back yet? You yep. never, you never yep. froze for me, so. Okay. Yeah, you never froze for me. Okay. So. Okay. Good. So it's just a McClendon problem. <laughs> uh, so, um, so. Core competency is uh, is a really nice uh, kind of one stop shop uh, for you to find out everything. So this is a, a test student, and so fortunately, there's not really much interesting in here. Um, but the way that students normally would uh, enroll in classes, not the freshmen. Um, so the way they would normally enroll in their classes is they click on this little enroll button, and then for each uh, each class, uh, they basically have uh, course options that they select. And uh, one of the things that we've done this year to, to make the system much uh, better is uh, there's custom uh, views for the students, so the courses that are allowed and the courses that are not allowed. And so, for example, here it's saying geometry can't be taken because the student, this test student hasn't uh, completed Algebra 1 yet. Um, and then it also is showing the courses in red here are the ones that, hey, you're getting behind, you're a... Uh, supposed to be graduating in 2024 and you haven't passed Algebra 1 yet, so make sure you take Algebra 1. And so uh, one of the hallmarks of our school is that we have a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, scheduling for our students. Uh, unfortunately for the freshmen, um, they're not going to experience that as much uh, because um, we need to, uh, to kind of make sure that the, the freshmen are taking the classes that we want them to take. And it's also a little bit overwhelming to, to have choice, you know, your very first day into school. And so uh, freshmen will not see the system until semester or uh, spring, the spring term. Uh, and so in the spring term, uh, the students will get to choose a couple of new classes um, uh, for, their, for their spring term. And so I think that's another kind of important thing for us to, to talk about now in case uh, you haven't uh, heard about this. So we have double block classes, so 75 minute classes instead of the usual like, like 40 minute classes. And so what that means is that um, for many of our classes, uh, the entire year's worth of class can be covered in one semester. And so for example, uh, English nine, the entire English nine might be covered in the fall, in the fall semester, um, or uh, they might take it in the spring semester instead. And so, um, so do not be alarmed if you're like, hey, how come the school doesn't teach English? Or how come there's no social science? It might just be that the, the kid is going to be taking it in the second uh, semester instead. Um, the one exception to this is the math. Uh, so we uh, have learned our lesson and learned that, that trying to do, um, this is what's called a four by four schedule. Um, uh, the problem with four by four schedules is that if you're only taking math for half the year and then you're not taking math for the other half of the year, by the time you take math again, uh, math is one of those skills that you need to constantly be building upon. And so there's, uh, it's really difficult for students to be successful in that second class if there's been that much of a, a, a gap. And so our math classes are typically all year long. Um, there is an accelerated version of that. So students can take algebra one and geometry. Um, so incoming freshmen can take algebra one and geometry if they want to accelerate. Um, but that's not necessarily um, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, something that you that you want your kid to do. So let me um, let me show you real quick what uh, what a grad plan looks like. Um, so this test student has a UC A to G grad plan, and uh, and so what you'll see here is even if a student takes Algebra one as a freshman and Geometry as a sophomore and Algebra two as a junior they still have the ability to take pre-calc and calculus as a senior. Um, and so Algebra 2 for sure is a year long class. So there's so much content that's covered in Algebra 2 that our math teachers were, were not being successful when they were trying to cram that into a one semester class. And so Algebra 2 for sure is a year long class. And so what winds up happening if a student takes Algebra and Geometry, um, uh, so I'm, 
So I, I can't actually manipulate this because I haven't given permission to, to students to manipulate their grad plans yet. Um, but anyway, so if I what I was going to try to do is drag geometry over to here. So let's assume that you took algebra and geometry in ninth grade, algebra two in 10th grade. You could take pre-calc and calculus in grade 11. But then the question is, well, what do you do in grade 12? And so um, we do have students who do that. And, uh, and it's totally fine for students to get ahead. But uh, that means that we're going to wish or want them to take some kind of college math class in grade 12 because you don't want to be going into college uh, having a, a math gap in your senior year. So anyway, even if you start at algebra and don't do the accelerated algebra and, uh, and geometry, you, every student still has the capacity and the capability of taking pre-calc and calculus, which is kind of where you want to end your high school career. You want to end with calculus so that you're ready to go take a college level calculus in your freshman year in college. Um, so don't be too, uh, too worried about whether or not your kid is getting behind in math. They're only getting behind in math if they're not passing their, ma their math class and then, uh, and then they're potentially going to have to retake algebra in grade 10 then maybe they're gonna get behind in math, but still not really behind because all that's expected for UCA to G, UCA to G are the, are the requirements that the UCs, the University of California and the San Diego State Schools, or the, sorry, the California State Schools, they have a set of graduation requirements or en enrollment requirements that's called UCA to G. And in the math world, only algebra, geometry and algebra two are required uh, in order to get admitted into a UC. So in the math world, everything's totally fine. And for every other class, there's usually no issues whatsoever with uh, getting a student um, uh, uh, graduated on time. So you can see that we've got quite a few elective options here. We've got college electives, um, passion projects. So there's plenty of, of, of you know, room uh, if a student gets behind for any reason to catch up uh, in, their, in their later years. Um, so, I still haven't answered Paul's question, so let me show you guys what a um, what the freshman schedule looks like. So under uh, orientation documents here, there's this link, and so you guys all have access to this. And so we tried to put all the ones that are important right now right up the front here. So you've got the the calendar, the bell schedule, and then the third item here is the freshman class groups. So let's go ahead and click on that. And so basically, we've got three different uh, groups um, that we call earth, wind, and fire. And there's really no difference between uh, these groups other than uh, the wind group, which has, uh, has the accelerated math, um, where they're doing algebra one and geometry in that first year. And so every year, we get uh, students who, um, who come in having done algebra as, uh, in, their, in their eighth grade year. And uh, so far, it's been the very rare exception that that eighth grade algebra is actually uh, prepares them enough for high school, um, because with Common Core, the, 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 the number of the, the number of, of topics and content uh, uh, that dropped down to uh, they got pushed into algebra one, uh, a you know, a lot of geometry and a lot of algebra two concepts got pushed into into algebra one. And so many students um, at a minimum need a refresher uh, for algebra algebra one. And so um, we strongly recommend that students just do the algebra one geometry accelerated uh, 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 math schedule rather than trying to skip algebra one because they're going to wind up in the same place anyway if they jump straight into geometry they're still gonna be taking algebra two as a, as a sophomore. So the only difference between earth, wind and fire here is, is, is the math. Uh, and, um, and so uh, even the, so the, the earth and fire are both year long um, uh, algebra one classes. So if students are, are just want a little bit more soap time or maybe they've struggled a little bit in math or don't, don't feel quite as comfortable, then those are probably the right places um, for them to be. And even if you're in uh, the earth or the fire group, you still have uh, access to uh, pre-calc and calculus before you graduate, which is exactly where you wanna be if you wanna get into a math science uh, engineering uh, career. Uh, Neil? Yeah. 
and not, you don't have to do it right now if you have a schedule, but some parents are asking about um, college classes and how they sign up and what's, what classes they get college credit for, et cetera. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's, we can jump straight into that. Uh, so let me, I don't think I need to be sharing my screen anymore. So let me go back to no. showing myself. Or put all you guys right over my little control panel here. Uh, stop shooting. There we go. Okay. Uh, so college classes. Um, so we have a deal with uh, Mesa College um, that allows our juniors uh, to take up to two college classes per semester and our seniors to take up to three college classes per semester, which is a really great deal because they used to limit it to one per semester. Um, but we were able to convince them that it was, uh, you know, the students that we have who are wanting to take college classes are going to improve uh, their pass rates. Um, so makes makes them look better, makes, you know, gives us, uh, gives, it's good for our families. Uh, and so um, we were able to convince them to give us this, this deal, which is, which is awesome. And so uh, the, the one rule that we can't uh, change though is that uh, you're not eligible to take college classes. Um, this is the Mesa College, it's actually the San Diego City College District, which has this rule. You're not eligible to take classes until you've completed your sophomore year. Um, so, so do keep that in mind that um, it's not really even an option until, until uh, year three. Um, the, the best deal for, uh, for college classes, uh, and it's, I think it's the best deal because um, it's probably really, really hard. Um, and so be careful about, about making the choice to take to do this. But the best deal is one semester of a college language class uh, counts as two years of a of high school language. And so anyone who's trying to just you feel like, hey, you know what, I've been doing Spanish for years. I feel like I'm really good at Spanish. Um, uh, that's a that's a, a easy way to, to to knock out a bunch of uh, language requirements in high school. Um, dual enrollment, uh, so meaning that you get credit for college and also uh, high school. So kind of the obvious uh, ones are, are English. So English 101 and English 205 are, um, those can replace any of our English classes. We prefer that students take English 11 with us because that's kind of the, the big, you know, that's the, that's, the, that's the class where kids really learn how to, how to write because they're at the right maturity level, they've had the right experience, and uh, there's their, you know, we, we really prefer that the kids do English 11 with us um, before they do English 101. Um, and so kind of our ideal path in the English world is English 9, 10, and 11, and then 101 and 205 um, if the kid is really interested in, in um in pursuing a humanities uh, degree later on in life. Hey, Neil. Yes. We have some parents who may be parents of incoming juniors and seniors. Can you talk to the downfalls of getting a W? Yes. Uh, so, so one thing that's uh, uh, became apparent this year because of COVID. So we all know that, that it was stressful uh, taking classes during COVID. And so something to, to know. So all of us who uh, took uh, college classes, we knew that where that, that W uh, deadline was. So I can drop a class up until uh, the W deadline and uh, I'm going to be okay. I can retake the class later and it's not going to affect my GPA. Uh, unfortunately, for the, for the kids who are doing dual enrollment, the, the high school students who are taking college classes, a W counts the same as an F as far as the school is concerned. And they uh, are not excited about uh, filling their classes with a bunch of students who are going to ultimately drop them. And so the minute a student gets a W, um, they are no longer eligible to take uh, college classes ever um, for the remainder of their time in high school. And so we are going to be, you know, it's, it's, this is going to be something that we'll reemphasize every time a, a student signs up for a class. Pay attention to the drop deadline. If you feel like you're not going to do well in this class, drop it well before um, the, the W deadline to, to drop, uh, because we need to, um, you know, we want these kids to have the option to take college classes in the future. There is a way to petition out of it, but it's not an easy process. Also, just bear in mind that we, um, say high school, we don't have any control over what's going on at the uh, community college. 
Um, it is. I I uh, I love a comment that a student made a few years back. Said, "Hey, they expected me to do college work over there." Well, <laughs> it's college, okay. So we don't have any control over that, and we really can't even go look at their grades that are going on. We do get the transcript and get the information back, but do know that make sure that your child knows it is college. You know, you can't come back to us and say, "Hey, I really." don't like my professor at Mesa. I will say again, it's college. It's, we can't go ask Mesa to change professors for them, you know, or there's a lot of things that we can do at our high school, but we're not gonna change teachers for them. But uh, just know that it really is college and it is not set high school. Make sure they know that. So any other questions that have been in the chat that I've missed? That Need to get escalated? No, it seems like Carrie's answering all of those. Okay, good. So any questions about the college classes? Um, so I know it's uh, the main reason we mentioned, especially for the for the younger, um, for, the, for the families that have younger students coming in. Um, it's just kind of good to, I know we want to, we want to plan and we want to think about the trajectory for our students. Um, the, really the most important thing in that, that freshman year is for the kids to, to learn good study habits and good study skills and um, to pass their classes. And as long as they're doing that, there's like zero chance that they're not gonna graduate from high school. Um, so then the next level is, okay, I want them to get into a really good school. So what do they need to be doing in order to get into a really good school? And again, same answer, you know, do really well in your, in your classes and, uh, and learn as much as you can so that you're going to be able to do well in the in the future classes, and you're going to have those study habits that are going to allow you to do well. Uh, one of the things that that we do, in addition to the Mesa College uh, classes, is uh, so you might have heard about our passion projects. So um, those uh, we're hopeful that we're going to get uh, really get those rolling again. Um, that was one of the the biggest biggest casualties for us uh, with with COVID is is losing the the momentum that we had with the passion projects. We had uh, I think um, right before we we went into um, into the COVID lockdown, I think we had seventy to eighty percent of all of our students were actually engaged in a passion project, which is which is really cool. Especially since the passion projects were not mandatory, not graded, um, um, and uh, but still the students there was enough like interest and kind of buzz around the campus that hey, I get to do something that's really cool during my time at school. And just know that uh, you know, when you're talking to your, to your students about, about what they're doing at SET, all of that extracurricular stuff is so important when it comes to uh, getting into to good schools, if that's the goal to, to get into a really good college. Uh, because you know, everyone else has lots of, you know, everyone else has 4.5 GPAs and everyone else has, uh, you know, maybe they're playing multiple sports and they've got these extra uh, co-curricular activities, but there's not a lot of kids that have, you know, changed the world through a passion project um, or done, you know, you know, written a novel or, you know, all the other amazing things that our kids wind up doing through passion projects. So really something that we encourage them to do. And, uh, and, and I, and it's, it's kind of one of the, the hallmarks of our school that one of the things I'm really proud of. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Um, in addition to the social emotional advantages of a kid staying in a high school their full four years, can you speak to the advantage of <clears throat> them staying in high school so maybe they could have theoretically graduated a semester early but taking college classes and staying in high school versus if they graduate a semester early and then go to a, uh, a community college? Yeah, yeah. So. Um... One of the, the main reasons that we uh, wanted to get this deal with Mesa College is because a lot of our students who, you know, when you when we give we give a lot of flexibility with the, with the scheduling, and so um, if students decide to not take any electives and just try to to cram in all of the core classes, um, it's possible to graduate in three years of our school, and um, or three and a half years. And the problem though, when a, when a student does that, is one they're um, they're probably not uh, mature enough to be able to do well uh, living on their own. And I think you probably as parents don't want them to be, you know, you've got four more years with your, only four more years with your kid. And trust me, it goes fast. Um, 
And, uh, and so when they tell you, it's like, oh, I'm actually only going to spend three years with you. That's a, that's a big blow for the parents. And so nobody wants them to graduate early. We don't want them to graduate early. You guys don't want them to graduate early. And uh, they also don't look impressive to universities because they haven't taken many classes. Uh, and so, and they haven't done a passion project and they haven't done anything that's actually going to make them look different. And, uh, and so there's not really a lot of advantages to graduating early, not to mention that they're now becoming adults way before they, anyone should become adults. I think we should, you know, get to be kids until we're 30. So, but we've got kids who want to become adults at 16, 17. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the, the main problem with, with a kid graduating, let's say six months early, is they think, oh, I'm gonna graduate uh, six months early and I'm gonna take some community college classes and I'm just done with high school and I don't wanna have to worry about high school anymore. I'm just gonna take uh, community college classes. The problem with doing that is that the, the student now becomes ineligible to become a ninth grade uh, uh, college admit. And so they have to wait a full two years in order to become a transfer student um, the minute that they take a college class as a non-high school student. And so that's something to just kind of always keep in mind. Uh, just by, by keeping those ties with us as a high school, they actually get to still be a, a freshman admit. And uh, on top of that, they also have all of these college classes that are going to make them look like uh, you know, better, better candidates for the school. They're proving that they actually are successful uh, taking college classes. And then, um, uh, and then on top of that, they're getting college credit for these classes. And so they may get admitted as a freshman, but they're probably gonna be basically 10th or, or maybe even, uh, uh, it's not 10th and 11th, it's college, it's sophomore or junior. <laughs> we know uh, uh, because of the, the college credit. So anyway, so just something to, to keep in mind that uh, accelerating um, for the sake of accelerating uh, basically just means the kid is, is becoming an adult faster than maybe any of us want them and that they're even ready for. It. And so um, do keep that in mind. Uh, we much prefer that the kids kind of really soak in their time in high school and take electives and, uh, and really kind of explore and figure out what their passions are. Um, that's really the best, the best thing for them to do so that they're, uh, when they do finally uh, move on to the next phase of their life, they've lived and they know what, what it is that they should be doing in, with their life. And I'm sure none of you guys care about this, but uh, the more classes that they take while they're in high school, college classes, that's the less outlay that you guys have to do when they go to college. So <laughs> it could be that they can, as Dr. McCurdy was saying, they could pretty close to complete their freshman year of college while still in high school. So all of you guys should be thinking, cha-ching, uh, that's, our, that's our vacation money. <laughs> yeah. We have the Barrage with their hand up. Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, so um, our son Lucas it just finished middle school and he'll be a ninth grader coming into set. Um, they asked him to hold on to his laptop, um, you know, for you know, as long as we're going to be in San Diego Unified, so he did. It is should we be returning that, and then you guys give him one, or should he just hold on to the one he has? Yeah, no. So that's uh, so we are not part of San Diego Unified, and so that that laptop is should go back to San Diego Unified. So it can go to another another child who needs it at San Diego Unified. So we we do have laptops for every child here. Yeah, we're San Diego Unified is our authorizer, so we do have. An affiliation with them, but uh, if it's in a unified property, send it back, and we we have a computer for every kid. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions? I um, so I just looked at the clock, and it's actually nine fifty-seven, and and I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. But I'm happy to uh, stay on and and continue to answer questions. Um, is that hand right. again, uh, Ms. Baird? Or did it just I have a question yeah. or a quick request. So hi, everyone. My name is George Beaumont. We have an incoming uh, freshman, our daughter here, Gianna. We're excited. She's super excited to be here. Um, we live up in the Encinitas Carlsbad area. And so it's a bit of a haul here for us. So I just want to open invitation to everybody that's on the call. If you're in the area, we'd love to carpool 
or if you have a son or daughter that has a driver's license, we'd love to share gas money if they drive there. But uh, we're part of the uh, parent group on Facebook. So if you want to reach out to us there, or if you want to get a hold of Carrie, we would greatly appreciate it. It'd be a big help for us. Thank you. And sorry, George, for calling you Jorge. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's Jorge. It's George. It's Georgie. It's 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 all above. So so, but thanks for asking. Sure. Uh, so Ms. Baird, I, I didn't hear whether that hand is a new hand or if that's the one from before. Okay. Uh, uh, Robert. Uh, there. Now I'm unmuted. Hey, so uh, two quick questions. So we've got a uh, we've got an incoming junior, um, and he'll be driving. Can you talk about uh, how that how that works with uh, are there parking passes that we have to go uh, get for their, for a student lot and all that? And then um, question on uh, summer school classes as well. Are those do you offer those as a way to like keep pace or get ahead, or are they solely for um, going back and fixing what? what wasn't done during the year. Thanks. Yeah, um, so thanks for asking that question. So uh, parking is a, is a non-issue. Um, we do not have, uh, the, so there's plenty of space, so we haven't needed to, to limit it at all. So basically kids just come in and park. Um, uh, so that's not an issue there. Uh, do know that as an 11th grader, it is uh, still a closed campus. And so, um, so, he can't go to his car during during the school day, so he needs to once he parks his car and he comes up to, to our campus, then he's here for the day. Um, I'm forgotten what the second question was. Uh, on summer school classes. Oh, summer school. That's right. Sorry. Uh, so summer school is only credit recovery, uh, and um, the reason is that we don't actually, you know, we're using a ingenuity uh, curriculum, and we don't have. Um, we don't have the, the confidence that the material that the students are learning with that ingenuity curriculum is at the same level as what, what we deliver in the classroom with teachers because we've got uh, you know, uh, group discussions and, 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 uh, and projects and essays and all these other things that, that we just don't feel like are, are covered in that in the ingenuity curriculum. And so, um, so it is only for credit recovery, unfortunately. And before we do get to the point where we're going to be logging off, uh, I don't know, I don't see her on my screen if Ms. Vegas is still here. If she wants to give a little blurb. No, oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot to. I well, see. we introduced her. She introduced herself, but I don't. Yeah. I don't sure. see her. Yeah. Uh, so, um, she, so, Neil, real, real yeah. quick, she just lost internet connection. So, um, but she offered the set parent email if people have questions. Okay. Uh, so Robert, uh, one option that you do have for your child though is, uh, is, the, is the community college summer classes. It might be too late to sign up for those now, I think. Um, but that, that is a summer school option for getting ahead. Uh, Sasha Wilson. So I just want to make sure I understand the dates that are coming up. So around July 15th, we'll get an email to sign up for the parent or the the register so we can sign up for classes with our child. If we mm -hmm. have any questions, will there be anybody at school at that time of year so we can call? Like, will Ms. Heath be there? Yeah, we, we live there. You live there, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then you know, for that first, like first week of school for incoming freshmen, do you guys have getting to know you activities? What yes. can we expect? Yeah, so we're, um, so, we're, we're going to try to figure out uh, uh, the, the best way to do this, given the, the whatever the COVID situation is at the time this, the school year starts. Um, so typically, uh, we have a freshman retreat. Um, and so two years ago, the freshman actually took over the school for a day and a night. And so had, we had a sleepover at school and uh, had a really uh, uh, fun time with the, with the freshman. Um, the last year, because of COVID, we did something similar, um, but it was it was outside of school hours, but it was on Google Meet, Zoom is, is the equivalent. And uh, and so it actually wound up being a, a pretty cool event where we had a, a talent show and, and uh, I was really proud of our of our staff for uh, how they got the kids to actually like, you know, be engaged with one another and get to know each other. And so I think uh, we, we had a pretty good, 
pretty good way of, of, of getting the kids to, to get to know each other. So not exactly sure what, what it's going to look like. My preference would be to, you know, I'm a, I'm a camper. I love camping. And uh, so I'd love to be able to have the kids spend the night um, right. at school, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that with COVID. Hopefully. All right. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. But also their first, um, during that first week, they get to meet a lot of the, the different kids that are in the different uh, classes and stuff. So they'll have, um, <clears throat> not necessarily get to meet all of them, but that'll be there. And like, like Neil was saying, uh, it'd be nice if we can. If we can, we will have um, the freshman retreat. And I'm not a camper guy, so uh, I won't be spending the night. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so last call for questions. Um, know that you can always uh, send us an email. Uh, the principal at sethigh.org is probably the, the, best, uh, the best email for you guys to use to get a hold of us. Info goes to the same group of people. So um, don't, don't worry about if you forget to use the principal one. But don't, don't email me directly because I get tons of spam emails and so it's really hard for me to, to catch everything. So principal goes to all of us, so more likely to catch it. Well, all three of us that are on here. Yeah, yeah. The Barrett's uh, another question. Yeah. Me, yeah, um, another question. So uh, do you need for us to be getting anything from San Diego Unified from where my kid was going to middle school for him to start there? Do I need to get a transcript or ask for anything? I don't know. Yeah, so if you can get um, request just an unofficial transcript, that's super helpful for me. Um, if you are, if your student is in any grade other than ninth, I definitely need that transcript um, so I can figure out how to schedule them. It's less important for incoming ninth graders, but still helpful in case they took a language or um, a high school level math class. And then I'll get the official transcripts once I start requesting files. But yeah, feel free to email that to me whenever you get it. So you said it's called an unofficial transcript for time yeah. being. Got yeah, it. that's totally fine. Okay, thanks. That's the only question. And I think that's available in PowerSchool, Melissa. Yeah, but right now I logged into PowerSchool and it's all locked down and I can't see anything. I don't know if you've gone in lately, Jennifer. <laughs> it might just be, it's probably just temporary. I would guess it's afraid they're upgrading or something. So you should, I because I was able to print out Tanner's a couple days ago. Really? Mm -hmm. I went in yeah, yesterday and it was like there was no grades. I wanted to see the final grades, but I couldn't. It's probably because of summer school, I bet. Okay, I'll but check it again. I would guess that might be my, my next question. Um, I just was curious about school supplies. Do you recommend us purchasing any types of school supplies over summer? So the, I mean, just kind of your, your typical, typical things like, you know, just notebook and, and paper, pencil, um, uh, pens. Uh, there's not really a lot of the stuff that we do is, is done online. And I think it's going to be, you know, just because of COVID, I think it's going to continue to be a lot of, uh, a lot more of online kind of things than, than anything else. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's good for the kids to, to get in the habit of, of taking notes with paper and pencil, but in terms of turning things in, it's this year it was all electronic. And so, um, yeah. they could get by without anything. And in terms of like one of the things I was thinking about is I know in the past they may have had notebooks and things like that for their English class and essays, um, but our English teachers um, use basically Google. Um, they use, you know, to turn in their work. And so we have Google Classroom and things like that. So, and they'll have a computer. If they have their own computer, they can also use their own computer as opposed to using ours. But a lot of that work, when you sit online, I don't want you guys to think that, oh, okay, that it's gonna be all teaching online. It's just the fact that uh, we use Google for tons of things. Melissa, do you still have your hand up or is that from before? <laughs> okay well thank you everybody um, we're really looking forward to, to next year I think it uh, sounds like we've got a great group of parents and uh, and we hope that you're going to be uh, super involved and continue to be super involved with uh, with the school and with your with your students know that uh, in high school the, the your little angels start to start to push you away and so we see less of the parents as, as you get older um, as your child gets older 
Um, but uh, that doesn't mean we don't want you to be involved. So uh, don't, we're just kind of in the habit of, of forgetting that the, the parents are out there and want to be involved. So it's, just a, it's a very different animal from elementary school and middle school. I was laughing when he was saying that because they don't want you involved, but we do. Yeah. <laughs> we don't really care what they want. So make sure that when they give you that baloney about, oh, no, 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 they don't want, they don't want anybody to help them. That's a bunch of baloney. We, we do. You heard it here. Also, make sure that your, if your child did a lot of um, online or hybrid and stuff like that, get them mentally prepared for the fact that we will be open and you will be coming to school. None of this, okay, well, I'm just going to stay at home and, you know, play my video games. Oops, wait, kids don't do that. Uh, or watch Netflix and that other stuff. Now, start saying, hey, you're going back to school. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend and have a great summer. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. You too. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>
Cool. <laughs> Did you paste that in the in the chat? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. We got to remember to send that out to uh, to everyone in an early email because I think we we wind up with parents not knowing about it mid year. Yeah. So the last, the last two people, three people. If you guys don't say hello, you're gonna have detention next week. <laughs> This must be Jackie's child, huh? Gerard? Yeah. <laughs> Liz, Gerard. Liz, are you there? All right, I'm going to stop recording. This is, you can't be harassing people on. <laughs>